All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Extra Point. I'm the Relentless Rebel, and uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. I uh, basically poured my heart out in the last episode about the Ole Miss fan base, and uh, I'm, I'm past that right now, and hopefully the Rebel fans will um, will listen and show up and, and give the Ole Miss Rebels uh, my alma mater um, something, uh, you know, we'll give them all the support they need this weekend. But speaking about this weekend in college football, to this weekend, Texas and Oklahoma. It's the Red River rivalry. And I thought, you know, since it's uh, about type of the Red River rivalry, I'm going to give you my um, five best rivalry games in college football today. These are in no particular order. Um, we can mix and match. If I'm leaving something out, feel free to comment. Uh, but I'm going to start with the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry. This is a rivalry that, that goes back a, a, a very long time. Uh, Michigan leads the all-time series 57-43 and 6. Ohio State's won the last six me won the last meeting 21 to 10 over Michigan. Uh, the Buckeyes have won the last six games against the Wolverines. Uh, notable stuff going on in this rivalry. We all know about the 10-year war between Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes. Bo Schembechler um, was a, a former Ohio State assistant uh, who ended up taking over at Michigan in, I believe, 1968 or somewhere around that era, somewhere around that time. And... Um, Shem Beckler uh, had, a, had a record of five wins, four losses, and one tie against Woody Hayes. 18 national championships and 10 Heisman Trophy winners between the two schools combined. I mean, you want to talk about one of the best rivalries in college football, this is it. Uh, another rivalry that I thought was a very, that that I think is a very interesting rivalry in itself is the Holy War between Utah and BYU. Utah leads the all time all time series 53 34 and four, but the series is tied five games apiece in the last ten meetings. Um, the fans of both schools and the players from both schools are what really makes this rivalry what it is. Utah is a public, uh, secular university, while BYU is owned by the Mormons. Um, the Mormons are forbidden from swearing, drinking, and and gambling. And... Uh, Utah makes fun of BYU for what they believe in, and BYU makes fun of Utah for for what they do. And um, I, I think it, it's it's a quite a, a a different type of rivalry. It's more of a religious type rivalry. I mean, it's a great rivalry, and not to mention the two schools are separated by only about 50 miles. I think the, the best rivalry of all. Of, of these rivalries, in my opinion, um, would have to be the Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn. Alabama leads the all-time series 40-33-1. and one. The Iron Bowl dates back to uh, Alabama's rich history and role back in the iron and steel industry. And some notable games here between this rivalry. There are three uh, uh, games that really make the Iron Bowl what it is. We go back to 1967 with Kenny Stabler's run in the mud. Uh, tied quarterback Kenny Stabler had a 47-yard touchdown run. It was the go-ahead touchdown uh, that ended up beating Auburn 7-3. There was a torrential downstorm, uh, a torrential thunderstorm that night. Uh, mud everywhere. It was just a nasty, nasty football game that Alabama came out on top. 1972, the famous punt Bama punt game. Auburn was down by 13 points late in the fourth quarter. I think there was about six minutes left. They forced Alabama to punt once, blocked that punt, returned it for a touchdown. Then they forced Alabama to have to punt again, and Auburn blocked that punt, returned it for a touchdown, and Auburn ended up winning that football game 17-16. And then in 1985, um, it was the kick game. That was where uh, Alabama kicker Van Tiffin hit a 52-yard field goal as time was expiring, and that, and that uh, propelled Alabama to a 25-23 win over Auburn. Um, 
This year, uh, the Alabama ga Alabama Auburn game will be played in Tuscaloosa in Bryant Denny Stadium, and this uh, game will set an all-time attendance record for any Iron Bowl. Um, previously, they'll have over 101,000 in Bryant Denny Stadium on that day in late November. Um, uh, the reason why I'm doing this uh, episode, it's because of the next rivalry, the Red River rivalry between Texas and Oklahoma. Texas leads the all-time series 59-40-5. The game is played at a neutral site, and, and it, it's funny that it's played in Dallas, Texas, because between Norman, Oklahoma, and Austin, Texas, the midway point is Dallas. And uh, it's played at the Cotton Bowl, the old Cotton Bowl now, now that the Cotton Bowl games moved to Jerry World out there in Arlington, Texas. Um, this game is still being played in Dallas. It'll be played in, da in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl until about, I, I believe, 2016. Uh, the tickets are split 50-50 between the two uh, universities, and the stadium is actually, when, when, when the teams uh, and their fans come into uh, the Cotton Bowl, they're, they're separated at the 50-yard line, uh, which I think is quite interesting. And here's, a, here's an interesting little statistic about this rivalry. Out of the last 10 meetings, six times, six out of the last 10 meetings featured one of the teams that ended up playing for the BCS National Championship, which I think is just unbelievable um, the talent and the caliber of coaching that both Texas and Oklahoma have and then what's a rivalry without a little bit of a, a, a cocktail party yep that's the Florida which it's now known as the Florida Georgia football classic or the Georgia Florida football classic depending on what side you're you're from uh, it used to be known as the world's largest outdoor cocktail party um, and it, they actually play for a trophy that's known as the Oki Finoki Or, although I've never seen it personally. Um, I wonder what that looks like. If anybody has a picture of what this trophy looks like, send me a link down on my on my uh, here on a comments page or on my Facebook, either one, because I, I most of my viewers are from Facebook, and uh, I'd like to know what this trophy looks like. But some notable games um, in this in this rivalry was the. Um, was the uh, Run Lindsay Run um, uh, game where uh, uh, Georgia was down 21 to 20 with time running out, facing a third down and long from their own eight yard line. Uh, Buck Ballou found wide receiver Lindsey Scott open in the middle of the field near the Georgia 25 yard line, and Lindsey Scott just took it the rest of the way. And um, Improbable 26-20 victory kept Georgia's national title hopes alive, and they would actually go on and win uh, the national title. Um, uh, another another uh, rivalry game. It was back in 2007. Georgia scored the first touchdown, and Mar and Coach Mark Rick ordered. Um, his team to draw an excessive celebration penalty after the first touchdown or they would be subject to extra conditioning drills. Uh, but he intended that only the players on the field would celebrate, not the entire team. The entire team ran out onto the field, celebrated after the first touchdown, and then that prompted Urban Meyer the very next year for the revenge game. Um, before, uh, both coaches repeatedly stated that the previous year's incident would have no bearing on the contest, but Urban Meyer went so far as to issue a gag order on his players, instructing them not to talk about the previous year's game. Uh, and uh, the Bulldogs and the Gators were both ranked in the top five going into this football game, and the winner would have the inside track of winning the SEC East Division and a possible shot at a national title. And... Um, after the Bulldogs missed two field goals and failed to recover an onside kick after their first score, the Gators took a 14-3 lead at halftime. Georgia, Florida forced four Georgia turnovers and uh, ended up beating the Bulldogs 49-10. Uh, the loss was the worst of Coach Rick's career at Georgia and the second worst loss that the Bulldogs had ever suffered against Florida. Um, Meyer used, uh, Urban Meyer then actually called both of his remaining timeouts with less than one minute to play, giving his team and their fans more time to celebrate the victory and dragging out the painful loss 
for, a, for as long as possible uh, for Georgia. Uh, that's a really nasty rivalry. That's an ugly rivalry. Last year was another Florida route of the Georgia Bulldogs. I can only imagine what it's going to look like this year. Georgia's struggling. Florida is trying to get everything together. They're going to have a tough game this weekend against the Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. After Saturday, I'm going to have a college football wrap-up show uh, immediately following all top 25 and SEC games completed. I'll post that as soon as that all that's over, and then I'm going to wait till about Tuesday to post a Week 4 recap. Until then, I'm the Relentless Rebel. This has been another episode of The Extra Point. Thank you for joining me tonight. You could always find me on my channel at, the Relent at search YouTube search Relentless Rebel. You should find everything there. Until then, I am the Relentless Rebel, and I'll be seeing you guys down the road.